So I want to inspire you and fire up your desire to start traveling. You need not be sidetracked by Satan. And I explain what that's about. If you have an imagination, you must be willing to travel. You're going to need to get your imagination travel ready. How this young lady uses her imagination to make her dreams of travel come true. If you've been putting off your travel plans, I suggest you watch this week's video and implement the steps that we're going to be going over. When you're seeing, you're hearing, your sight, your taste, your touch, all align and say that I've experienced this already. Welcome to this week's video. It is a fun topic and one that I love and we're about to go traveling. If you love travel and you've been dreaming about visiting exotic far off places that you've perhaps seen online, you've heard people speak about their own travel experiences, maybe you've seen a brochure or an advert advertising some wonderful destination. Well, this week, we're going to be exploring how you can actually get ready so that you can travel. This week, we learn how one young lady does this without having to have the money or time available before she decided to travel. And while this sounds really good, wouldn't you love to be able to travel without the concerns of money or time? There is one thing that can be a huge challenge for many people, not just travel, but with manifesting any dream. When I talk about it, it might sound ominous. Neville Goddard speaks about this in a very different way to what is known in the mainstream. Last week, I asked you if you wanted to unlock the power of your imagination. Well, we discussed the four gates of manifestation, and we're going to go into all four of them this week in terms of how you can start to ignite and fire up your imagination. When you have a desire, you must make it real. You must make it feel like it has the tones of reality. Since, since watching last week's video, have you been practicing with the gates of manifestation in terms of your imaginal scenes? Well, it does take practice. So please continue to persist with your practice. We'll talk a bit more about how you can bring more of the tones of reality into your imaginal scenes. In terms of this week, we're going to take a look at how the gates of manifestation will work for any desire. But in this week, like I said, the topic is travel. And I don't know about you, but I love to travel. And I feel like it's time that I went on another travel adventure. So that's what I'll be doing is Definitely taking some of the cues out of this week's case study and applying it to my own imaginal scenes. So if you want to join me, please comment down below. Let me know what destination you're thinking of. And uh, let's actually compare notes in terms of how using the gates of manifestation work out. It's something that many people love doing. They love talking about this. Travel enables us to explore new places experience different cultures, meet different people who wouldn't love to travel. Now, the bonus would be when you don't have to worry about how you're going to travel. How are you going to take that trip? And I'm going to talk a little bit more about, about what you do when the question of how comes up. The issue is, though, that many people can be left feeling disappointed, disheartened, and disbelieving when their manifestation does not work out. If you are to overcome any feelings of disappointment, desperation, doubt, disbelief, you must, must learn how to enter the subconscious mind using the four gates of manifestation. You must take the time to immerse your imaginal scene. As Neville calls it, you must clothe your scene in these tones of reality. And the tones of reality are achieved through feeling it real through your senses. And it's not the outer senses. It's your inner sense. It's your inner seeing. It's your inner hearing. It's your inner sense of touch. And when you're able to make that real, when you bring your inner senses to your imaginal scene, you are making that real. You make it so real that it is already lived within you. It has already become your state of consciousness and your being in terms of that desire. So listen along and follow along in terms of the case study. How will you use the case study that we look at in this video 
in order to make your imaginal scene take on the tones of reality. Share that with me down uh, in the comments below. Back to this week's video, let's look at how we can use all four gates in terms of entering the state of the wish fulfilled around travel. If you have an imagination, you can travel. Follow along in this week's video so that you can ignite your imagination and make your desire and your wishes fulfilled. Very quickly, remember the four gates are about you being able to invoke reality into your imaginal scene. Four gates, very briefly, are the Western Gate of touch or taste, the Southern Gate of sight, the Eastern Gate of scent or smell, and the Northern Gate of sound. Or how this young lady FG uses her imagination to make her reality come true. Your imagination is most creative when you can imagine things as you desire them to be. You must build this new experience in your imagination. When you build this new experience to such an extent in your imagination, you bring in the play of all of your senses. And that is what FG did. She brought sight, sound, smell, touch, and even taste into her imaginal scene. And this is how she did it. When she writes into Neville, she says, since childhood, I have dreamed of visiting faraway places. The West Indies particularly fired my fancy, which means imagination. It was her desire. She says, I would revel in the feeling of actually being there. So now she's got a strong desire. If you have a burning desire, and it's something that you truly want to, to have in your reality. You must bring in the gates of manifestation so that you can now infuse your imagination with those tones of reality. She says this though, dreams are wonderfully inexpensive. As an adult, I continue to dream my dreams. For I had no money or time to make them come true. And I want to pause on this. I said that many people find that they become disappointed. They are desperate sometimes, disbelieving if they've been trying to manifest. One of the things that does come about in terms of when their 3D does not show the results that they wish to have. Maybe practicing sats, which is a state akin to sleep. They may be doing all of the affirmations. Um, they may have, they may also be doing various other techniques, but until they can infuse that imaginal scene, the desired outcome, when, until they can feel and make it real, where their senses, their inner senses are so immersed um, in terms of believing, that that desire is real, you're going to find that the manifestation can take a lot longer. Now, Neville says that, so there's one thing that can derail people, and that is doubt. According to Neville, he says that doubt is Satan. But Satan, in the context of how Neville speaks of it, is a title. It is not a specific entity as taught by religion, as you may hear of Satan or the devil as being an entity in many religions. The devil is literally a medieval construct. When we look at what Neville speaks about, he says Satan is the man who only believes in the evidence of his senses. And what that means is if his senses do not pick it up, if they doesn't see it in his reality, if he doesn't believe what he hears in terms of his physical reality, he doubts that that particular desire will be true for him. So he doubts what is in the unseen. And what is in the unseen is in your imagination. If doubt is introduced at that point, then you're going to find it is going to be a challenge. Another quote of, of Neville's is, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What it means is that when there is conflict, which says, I want, but I don't have, in that war between, in, in that war within yourself, where you desire something, 
but you are conscious that you don't have it. In the context of desire versus imagination, what you are imagining as lack is going to win out over your desire because your desire has not yet taken on the tones of reality. Now we're going to see in chapter 14 of the law and the promise, the chapter is called the creative moment. And I wanna preface this up front. God is the creative moment. Your imagination is the creative moment. Man is only reacting in his natural state or the state of Satan in that he never acts or creates. He only reacts or he recreates the past. So as of now, you must become aware that when you are in doubt, you are actually occupying the state of Satan. You are only reacting or recreating from the past. Now, that one real creative moment is all you need. When you have that real feeling, your desire is fulfilled. And that, Neville says, is worth more than the whole natural life of reaction. Because in such a moment, God's work is done. The work of your imagination, which feels it real, even if it's just that one moment, when all your senses align, when you're seeing, you're hearing, your sight, your taste, your touch, all align and say that I've experienced this already. My desire is already fulfilled. I have it. So why would I doubt that I don't? And that's what I want you to be aware of is not to be taken off track by doubts. Satan is the man who only believes in the evidence of his senses. And you as a powerful manifester and a creator of your reality, makes the unseen seen, just like FG does here. She says to Neville, I had heard your teaching, and while recuperating, I had decided to intensify my favorite daydream while I had time on my hands. I actually wrote to the Alcoa steamship line asking for free travel folders, and I poured over them hour after hour, choosing the ship, the stateroom and the seven ports I desired to see most. So here FG is recuperating from surgery in hospital. Most people would actually want to spend the time maybe watching TV or distracting themselves. She decided that she was going to intensify. She was going to bring in the feelings and the tones of reality to her favorite daydream, which was travel. So she says here, I would close my eyes and in my imagination would walk up the gangplank of that ship. So now here is the sense of touch and feel the movement of the water as the great liner pushed its way into the free ocean. So she uses the sense of sight that she sees the gangplank and she is looking at the steamship. And so as she walks up, she can feel the waves are moving up against the, the steamship. Further to that, she says, for one solid week, confined to a hospital bed, I lived the free and happy experience of actually being on that ship. She further says, I heard the thud of the waves breaking against the side of the ship and felt the streaming warmth of the tropical sun on my, on my face and smelled and tasted the salt in the air as we all sailed through blue waters. Now that becomes even more descriptive and vivid. So here we see that she brings in the northern gate of sound, which is the sound of the waves breaking against the side of the ship. The streaming warmth refers to the sense of touch, which is the Western gate. She feels the warmth on her hands and it would be very, very much something that you would experience if you were to be on a cruise ship. And she says that I then also smelled and I tasted salt in the air. And that is the Eastern gate, that of scent and smell. And then the Southern gate is the sense of sight. So bringing all of these things together, when she closes her eyes, she immerses herself into the scene and she brings the senses alive. And she says, for one solid week, 
while confined to a hospital bed, I lived the free and happy experience of actually being on that ship. And then the day before she is released from hospital, she says, I tucked away the colored folders and I forgot about them. This is also quite an important point. At some point, you are going to, when once you've lived and you've felt this desire within yourself is now fulfilled, it is done. Um, you are going to probably forget about that desire. And here's what she says. Two months later, I received a telegram from an advertising agency telling me I had won a contest. Now, I remembered having deposited a contest coupon some months before in a neighborhood supermarket, but had completely forgotten the act. And that's the thing. You will be uh, along the way. In terms of being so aligned to your desire, you may be compelled to take action. And that will feel so effortless. And like she says, she forgot about it. She just did it. She filled out the coupon and she forgot about it. And when um, and what happens then is that she wins this contest. She says, I had won first prize. And wonder of wonders, it entitled me to a Caribbean cruise sponsored by the Alcoa steam line ship. She says, but the wonder didn't stop there. The very stateroom I had imaginatively lived in and moved about in while confined in the hospital bed had been assigned to me. And to make an unbelievable story even more unbelievable, I sailed on the one ship I had chosen, which stopped in not one, but in all seven ports I had desired to visit, FG. When you sit down and you look at your desire, what are some of the things that you would experience when that desire is fulfilled? You'd be, in, in FG's case, we look at the Western Gate of Touch. She felt the warmth of the sun because she was on a cruise ship. She saw the ocean liner and she saw that she was on the sea. And uh, she then also saw the stateroom that she had picked out from the brochures. So very much like you may do a vision board, uh, if you if it will help you to see pictures, uh, go onto YouTube and look at visuals, look at a video, hear the sounds that may be reminiscent of a particular country that you want to visit, bring all of that in. Are there certain smells that you'd encounter in that country? Let's say, for example, you want to visit Peru. Palo Santo is very reminiscent um, and it's indigenous to Peru. You could actually like Palo Santo and uh, you could smell that uh, as part of locking in your senses. Say you wanted to visit Italy, you want to experience Italian cuisine, what would it be like if you were in a restaurant and you were um, to smell the aromas? You'd smell oregano for sure, you'd smell herbs, you'd, you'd be tasting pizza, you'd be smelling pizza, you'd be tasting pasta. Bring those, bring those elements in, things that you can connect to, which will imply that you are already, um, you've already experienced your desire. So in the case of travel, I'm going to encourage you to go look at pictures, go look at videos, ask people what kind of experiences they've had if they've been to a place that you desire to, to visit. What would the language what language would you hear? Might you want to learn a few phrases in terms of that language if you were going to that particular country? So be imaginative, play, play with the senses and see how you can start to live in imagination in terms of your desired end. So a reminder, this is what Neville says, in terms of when you predetermine your, your imaginal scene, what do you want to hear? When you sit down, already know what you want to hear, what you listen to, know what you'd like to experience, bring in all these senses, and then you must refuse to listen to anything else, anything that does not align with your desire. Drop it. Do not be Satan. Do not give in to doubt. 
Do not bring in conflict. Do not be double-minded in any way. And it's a reminder to you to say that, remember, you are using the one power in the world that awakens man. And become where when you awaken man, you become God. You become the creative moment. And that is what God is, your imagination. Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. And the hope of glory is you manifesting, you bringing these uh, imaginal acts into creation. Please share with me and leave your comments. What did you learn out of this week's video? And also, if you plan on traveling, if you'd love to travel, where do you want to visit? And what will you take out of this week's video in order to make your imaginal scene real? What will you do to give it the tones of reality? I loved this week's topic. I hope you did as well. There are so many interesting places and destinations to visit. And you do not need to start out with, will I have the money and how will I do this? That is the purpose of putting these videos together. For you to test the law, when you start to do things in a different way, you can see different avenues and different ways will open up for you in terms of how you can actually live the life of your dreams. Um, it doesn't always have to be a contest. It could be receiving a ticket to travel with a friend. It could be that a loved one sponsors a ticket for you. You don't know how it will unfold. So don't go there. The how is messing in the middle. You want to go to the end, which is you are already the person who has the desire. So get those imaginations fired up and have your passports ready because we're going to be traveling this year. I'll see you in the next video. 